the theologians, they'll refer to the life of Christ and how he fulfilled the law in two different ways. They'll talk about Christ's active obedience and Christ's passive obedience. And uh, both aspects were necessary in order to fulfill the law. Um, it has been indeed worked out that in the Bible, in the Old Testament, there's 613 commandments in the law. And uh, of course, um, we can't keep 10, let alone 613. Uh, and I doubt we could even keep one in our own power. Um, so it was necessary that Jesus come and fulfill the law. The problem was, was that we were all under the law's curse for breaking God's law, and that the law required judgment, condemnation. And so from his passive obedience, he took care of the curse of the law. But before he took care of the curse of the law, he fulfilled every righteous obligation of the law. And he did that for you and me. And I think that's really important for us to understand that the perfect life had to be lived, but the perfect life has been lived. And I think that's wonderful to consider. When we think of Christ our mediator, and we think of Christ um, giving his life for us, we have a tendency to focus mainly on his passive obedience. But what about his active obedience from the standpoint of the positive requirements of the law were fulfilled by Jesus Christ as well? Now, when we have professing believers who deny imputed righteousness, they, some, some, I don't think, realize the blasphemy being committed. But it is a serious crime when there are those who claim to be believers who are rejecting the imputed righteousness of Christ. Because what we're doing is we're denying his finished work. We're denying the perfect life that's been lived. We're denying the death that's been died. We're denying the sacrifice that's been given. And so ultimately, it is an outright, complete denial of the gospel itself. And unfortunately, I think there are many church denominations and even church individuals who deny the truth of the imputed righteousness of Christ. And in doing that, they're denying the gospel itself. And even, I would say, they're denying salvation. And they will be lost with that kind of a heresy. 